Brian McFadden here. Man, this is a great moment. Anytime I get a chance to be with my former teammates, especially my guy, Troy Palomalu, it's a big deal joining me here. Steelers, legend, <laughs> great, Hall of Famer, TP. How you doing? What's How you up, feeling, brother? man? I'm good, man. I'm I'm here on Radio Row, man. Radio Row. Nowhere else I'd rather be. <laughs> I already know. I already know. With me here on Radio Row. I know you love these things, by the way. I love you, though. I'm, yeah, I'm no happy question. to be here. I appreciate you joining me, man. When you talk about, you know, being here not as a participant in the game, but just being around this atmosphere, We've played in, we played in three of these together, man. When you talk about, and I won't include the one we didn't win, but when you talk about Super Bowl 40 and Super Bowl 43, what's your fondest memory from either ball game? Oh, man. Super Bowl 40. You know, like, here's one thing that I, okay, I'll be very frank with you on Super Bowl 40. It may be too deep of an answer. Super Bowl 40, I remember walking off the field thinking, this is it. I really, I remember thinking to myself, like, man, I thought the whole world was supposed to stop. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody in China was supposed <laughs> to stop their market and celebrate our victory. Yes. But the world kept going on. So yeah. I was like, dang, are you telling me in order to feel that momentary, like, satisfaction, I got to go through all that to do it again? Yeah. So to me, it was kind of like, dang, it was like such a short moment of, 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 of celebration so that... When Super Bowl 43 came around, like I really enjoyed that celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> we, did too. That's where because we were. I mean, that's when we were really like a part of everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we knew what we knew what it was like going to the Super Bowl, but then the last Super Bowl in which we lost, um, it really it, it it gave me a perspective as an athlete that there's two. There, there, there's there, there's two competitors mm -hmm. in every in, in in every competition. And that there's a winner and there's a loser. Yep. So all those times that I had celebrated, I'd never thought about the loser. Never. <laughs> so never. when I lost, I was like, "Damn, it this feels what it feels like this bad to to, to, to lose." Yeah. So it gave me a perspective of 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 of, of a competitor of being a winner and a loser, and mm. always having respect for the other side of things when I am a winner. Yeah. So that's what I learned through my experiences. Uh, you know, in terms of like fun and, and times, man. I don't know, man. That whole my whole career seemed like it was a Super Bowl, yeah. like a celebration. True, true story. So, yes. um, you know, there there's a lot of times that I that we share together and that we could joke about of our teammates together. Mm -hmm. But those to me, man, those are all like one amazing time together. Yeah, I agree. We had a special group, and we talk about this all the time. You know, you guys feel our energy. It, it was every year was a, it felt like it was a Super Bowl year. If we, if we, even if we didn't win it, yeah. just the camaraderie and the special moments and memories. And talking about everything that we accomplished together as teammates, for you individually speaking, I want to test your knowledge oh, about your career. All right. So <laughs> you you had 35 career interceptions, right, including postseason. Do you remember which quarterbacks you picked off? So I'm going to name some names. Oh wow. Yep. Is either yes or no, and a few of these guys oh you gosh, picked off quite crazy. a few times. That's crazy. <laughs> so the first quarterback, Tom Brady. No, definitely not. I know. I've never I, I was. Him up. I wanted to ask why you I, never picked off Tom Brady, Troy. Uh, well, we you needed got, a you pick got, from you. You got to ask Tom that question, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, why you never threw TP Troy at he's, least he's, one pick? You had one to spare. All, all of those touchdowns, man. You can't even just 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 pass one over, man. Exactly. So you got that one right. You never picked off Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Oh man, how many times? Man, I, I could just think of one. I can think of several drops. They and they I took can think one. Of several drops. They stole one they, from you. They stole one from me. Yep. yep. But one was you, you got them one time. Yeah. And they stole one for from you. Mm -hmm. We all know about that playoff <laughs> game. Eli Manning. Oh man, I'm gonna say zero. Right. Okay. Drew Brees. I'm gonna say zero. Right. Dante Cole Pepper. I'm gonna say zero. One. Oh, wow. You got Cole Pepper once. Ooh, what about this player? Your college teammate, Carson Palmer. I'm going to say two. Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. He loved throwing you some picks. Thanks, it was that SC thanks, love, right? <laughs> Fight on. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good roommate. <laughs> I gave up some, I, I gave up at least three touchdowns, so we're <laughs> even for sure. All right, Kyle Orton. A zero. One. I know you remember this one because I remember this pick, John Kitna. One. You remember what game? Yeah, same as <laughs> Playoff game, playoff game. You guys got mad at me, man. Yes. I'm trying to throw the ball around, share the wealth, and everybody. Troy <laughs> picked off John Kitna 
<laughs> and we're literally trying to block for Troy, but he's trying to lateral the football. And Coach LeBeau went bananas. You, he oh, was yeah, hot. He, went, he, went, he was, yeah, he he was, was bad. Brock <laughs> Heward. Brock Heward, zero. Zero. Damian Heward. Damian Heward. Yeah. I'm going to say zero, too. You got him one time. <laughs> All right, I got another game for you. You were one of the more, you know, physical, intimidating safeties in our era, right? So it's second and ten. This is a scenario. Second and ten, Troy. There's a handoff. All right. You got B-gap responsibilities or contain, whatever the case may be. It's you and the ball carrier, one-on-one. -on -one. This is a question of who would you rather face? Okay. Open field tackle, one-on-one. -on -one, Jamal. Oh, yes. Huh? Okay. Who would you less rather face? Okay. Like the guy you don't want to see. Jamal Lewis or Maurice Jones-Drew? Okay. So I have a really cool story with this one. Okay. So first off with Jamal Lewis. My rookie year, he ran for 2,000 yards. I remember that. I did not want to play football when I experienced that. I was so happy. I was not starting. I was like, Mike Logan was starting. I'm like, please, Mike, you start. <laughs> so it was it Mike Logan and who was the other? Dwayne uh, Washington? No, it was uh, Mike Logan and Brent Alexander. Okay, and, Brent. Uh, yep. Brent Alexander. So they were starting, and I was a rookie, so I did not want to play this dude. Because, yeah. uh, dude, he ran for 2,000 yards. He was a si His legs, his lower body was the size of Casey Hampton. Yeah, and he ran 4-3. Yes. So, I, yeah. like, to me, I was like, man, I – I do not want to face this dude. So I'm going to say him off, offset. Okay, okay. But, but, but the reason why I say that, too, is the next year when I played and I started, I tackled him. And that's when I knew I could play in this league. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't believe I tackled this dude that I really feared. Yeah, a year ago. And a year ago. Yeah. And that's when – and now for MJD, he actually played for my uncle. Mm -hmm. So I, I, always, I always had a little extra that I always had to bring, you know, whenever we played Jacksonville or Fred yeah. or Freddie T. Um, but Maurice is a beast, too. There's no way I would want to face either one of those dudes on the edge. But so you can imagine, like, a, a, a bowling ball, man. How do you tackle a bowling ball? That's I, MJD I, right I there. I remember Jamal Lewis, I think it was 05, 06. He ran me over so bad my chin strap dropped out of my helmet. It was 06, because I remember in the huddle, I asked RC, is it bad? And they were showing it in Baltimore yeah, on the screen. I remember and RC said, Mac, do not look up. Yeah, yeah. And I just heard the crowd when they saw the, the video, ooh. <laughs> and that's what I, because I grew up watching Jamal Lewis yeah. when he's at Tennessee. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. we talk about the 2,000 yards, so no question. So what about this one? Maurice Jones Drew or Steven Jackson? On the edge. Okay, so. I'm, I'm sorry, MJD. I'm going with Steven Jackson again because I got ran over by him on okay. the edge. So I haven't got ran over by you yet on the edge, <laughs> MJD. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Steven Jackson there. MJD, Ricky Williams. I'm, I'm sorry. St Steven Jackson, Ricky Williams. Steven Jackson or, Wiki, or, or Ricky, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams. Oh, man. Again, that's, that's... so Steven Jackson ran me over uh -huh. in college and in the NFL. So like I'll have to go with, yes, yeah, you got yes, I'm telling you. Going yeah. on. It was a Pac-12 And I bought love. this guy a plate lunch at, at, at the Pro Bowl. Really? Man, I'm trying to I'm – He was to, a big back I know. People don't realize The whole realize time I was big. batting him up, though. And I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking I was being nice. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. Steven Jackson was a beast, 6'2", 240, whatever oh, the case yeah. may be. All right, so we got Steven Jackson, Brandon Jacobs. Oh, man. So we, we did play Brandon Jacobs. Yeah, um, we did. 2008. And – you know, I never got in a position where he, he – if he would have put me in the same position as Steven Jackson, yeah. he probably would have ran me over too. But I'm going to go with Steven Jackson because he has – he's got the belt. Yeah, he got <laughs> the belt. Me. He took my belt. All right. Steven Jackson, Corey Dillon. Um, man, Corey Dillon. Last from the past. Gosh, man. I'm sorry. Steven Jackson. Okay. I'm going to have to go with Corey Dillon here. I got one for you. Corey Dillon, Marshawn Lynch. And I have a story, yeah. a Marshawn Lynch story. I don't know if you oh remember this. Goodness. Remember we played ball, Buffalo his rookie year. Yep. And we didn't really, this was like the first or second game of the season. We didn't know a lot about who this guy was. And I remember yeah. we came to the sideline and everyone was like, hey, man, have y'all tried to tackle the rookie yet? <laughs> it's like, like, it's a little different out there. Marshawn came in the league with beast mode mentality. But who are you taking? I'm taking beast mode there. Okay. But what's funny about that, too, is, man, special players – are special to their opponents before they're special to the audience. And it's it's really funny well because the way that the way that you said that yeah. was exactly how it is. It's like whether it's Marshawn or whether it's like another 
stud receiver, mm -hmm. what, whoever it is. I, man, I remember some of these amazing receivers that are all, like, literally Hall of Famer. When they first come out and Coach Bo's talking about, like, hey, guys, this guy's yeah. special. We're like, all right, whatever. And then you play them, you're, you're like, like yeah, dang. Yeah, he really is. And then, they, and then they obviously, you know, Pro Bowls, MVPs, and yeah. all these sort of stuff. But to me, that that is a, ra a great way that you put that, man, is, is you – Experienced how yeah. special we experienced how special Marshawn was before he became beast mode. Before he became beast mode, yeah, he surprised so. everyone. So shots out to Marshawn. Yeah, but for sure. Great list of running backs. Of course, a lot of these guys you played against, and I wouldn't want to tackle any one of them. Mm -hmm. All of them are great players, man. But Troy, I know you got to run. Thank you for joining me here Thank on you. CBS. Oh yeah, I got to yeah. do free late. So you want me to do free late? You want me to talk about? Okay, never mind. I got. You. But for, before we let you go, Troy, we know you're here on behalf of Frito Lay. Mm -hmm. I'm a Frito Lay lover. Tell us about what you have going on with Frito Lay. So, uh, been very proud to be part of the Taste of uh, Celebration commercial um, that was played throughout the playoffs. Yep. And now we're here in Las Vegas at the Chip Strip uh, Super Bowl. Um, down at the New York, New York, we'll be down there. I'll be doing a chalk talk, talking some football. Oh, There'll ooh. be a lot of other football players yep. down there uh, interacting with fans. Yeah. I really enjoy seeing you on commercials, by the way. Yeah, like, Thank that's you, that's a nice little thing for you. You might need to become an actor. You know what? I, I am a full-time actor. That's all I do now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. My great teammate, Hall of Famer, Troy Palomalu, is joining me here at CBS Sports. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Frito-Lay, enjoy the rest of your week, Troy. Thank and we're going to get together this Oh, yeah, season. no doubt. We're going to get together. No, no doubt.